and yeah, I gotta maybe. watch the stream to make sure we have sound because of the thing and the Twitch and the bug and OBS and yes. blah blah blah. Come on, I saw the thing come up and then it disappeared. Where is it? You're gonna make me reload the page again, aren't you? All right, fine. I'll reload <laughs> the page, and I'm just gonna keep talking. All right, we have sound. Thank you, Wildcard. And Dementia Radio now and recording in three, two, one. Recorded live on DementiaRadio.org, it's the Funny Music Podcast. Brought to you by TheFunk.com, where you can download new free comedy songs twice a week. Now, here's your hosts, Devo Spice and the great Luke Ski. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fumpcast. Hi, person who's not Luke. Hi. We have Chuck with us this week because Chuck worked with Steve on on Steve's new album, and she wanted to come on the show and talk about it. So, welcome, Chuck. Hi. Thank you. Good to have you. Uh, welcome to episode 736 of the Funny Music Podcast for Thursday, July 25th. The title of this week's episode is Evasive Lift, and I just put that in the chat so we can refer to it later, and your job is to work that into our conversations somehow. Mm. So uh, I believe Luke is at, uh, is he at Comic-Con? Yeah. So we're not sure if he's going to be joining us or not. Probably not, but so we decided to just get started. I have pre-recorded interviews with both Phil Johnson and Steve Goody coming up later in the show, so you can look forward to those. And let's do the catch-up thing. Let's get caught up with what Devo and Luke have been up to since last week. Or else Devo, if Luke failed and didn't show up. Hey, what? Oh, he's right. Point. Uh, usually the part that was where I say Luke would have been up to, but Chuck's here instead. So Chuck, what have you been up to? Um, not much. Same as usual. Drawing and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Just drawing. That's all you do is draw. That is. I draw. I sleep. I eat, and then repeat. That seems like a seems like a plan. I I like it. <laughs> So, um, I had a busy week since last week. Um, I, over the weekend, I went to NASFIC with the North American Science Fiction Convention, which was up in Buffalo. Uh, Shoebox showed up, so there was a Worm Quartet concert. I did a Devo Spice concert. There was also a Via Bella concert, plus about a dozen different filkers were there doing filk concerts. Um, I went to a bunch of panels. I sat on a couple of panels. I sat on a Doctor Who panel which was a lot of fun. Um, the The consensus of the Doctor Who panel is that everyone's favorite episode seemed to be 73 yards from this season, and everyone is sick of them destroying the universe. It's like, come on, you're going you're gonna to destroy the whole universe again? Like, come on, you know? So, but uh, yeah, so that was great. Um, I did last week. I also mentioned I had a cup of a cup, like three auditions that I had to do. Uh, and one of them was, was the first one I've gotten from my, the agency that I signed with. So I haven't heard back about that one, but the other two, one, I got a call back for that. I have to go into New York city on Sunday and do the, the call back in person. So I'm really excited about that. And the other one was for a spokesman position, like a virtual spokesman on a website. So that if you go to these lawyers' websites, you'll see me in the bottom corner going, have you been injured in a, in a car accident? The law firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe can get you lots and lots of money. So they, they seem to really like what I did, and I loved the idea of this particular prospect because it would be an ongoing thing. Like, they'd be giving me, like, multiple videos to do every week, and I'd get paid for each one. And money is a good thing because it allows you to buy goods and services like Chuck's <laughs> artwork, you know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's about it for me. Uh, I've just been prepping for this callback, trying to memorize the scripts that they sent me. And you know, all the usual the fump fest and the fump and blah, 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 all the usual stuff. It's been a week. 
So, um, that's all I got. Let's get into some music, shall we? I'm going to start with... Yes. I'm just going to go in order, so I'm going to start with Phil Johnson's song first. Here is My Personal Hell by Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. I went towards the light when I found out I was dead But I must have done something wrong because they sent me south instead in dead hell's orientation I found out what's in store An eternity of pain All this and more Kale for every meal Cake that tastes like dirt Spending every day Talking to a bunch of cute and old jerks They gave me a laptop But it's only here with phil johnson how you doing phil i'm good always great to see you you too so uh tell us about your own personal hell <laughs> so this song started uh, in 2019 actually i was doing a project back then called the 32nd song project i think that was the beginning I of everyone's a... personal hell was 2019 yeah i think so mm. yeah uh, yeah for sure absolutely <laughs> You're so right about that. 
I think we could argue 2016, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so do I have my ears right? Yeah, I think yeah. 2016. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I was doing this project where I was putting on a new little short song like every day for a year, and I ended up doing 368 of them. And it was a way of sort of kicking my butt back into songwriting after spending a long time working on the stand-up portion of my show. And then um, it was also kind of like test marketing premises for songs the way it worked out. And so a few of those became longer songs. Um, this particular one uh, did well then. It became the closing track on my uh, concept album last year called Do You Believe in Tragic, uh, which was a, a, the shortest concept album of all time. It's 18 minutes, 33 songs. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And that's the closing track there. So I did like a studio version. And then I had this sort of punk rock version in my head that I wanted to hear. And I th I said, I think there's more to the story here. I can write more lyrics. Uh, I want to hear this rocked out version of it. And so I went in uh, and, and did the full shebang. And now it's this. So, so you went from like a 30 second song to... How long is this song? This is several minutes like long. Four, 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 yeah, four minutes four or plus so, minutes roughly. Long. Yeah. So you added yeah. a lot. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. I added a lot. And the, I, I think the original version was like a minute or something. Like oh, okay. That. It was a little bit longer uh, than 30 seconds. But uh, the premise is if, if the hell were to exist, then modern technology would allow their design team to split test, optimize, and personalize that hell for everybody individually for maximum annoyance. Mm -hmm. And so this song is what would be in in my personal hell. Hence the name, my personal hell. Yep, kale for every cereal, cake that tastes like dirt. Yeah, so these are all real things that would drive you nuts, right? Yes. <laughs> the only thing on TV is Baby Geniuses 2. <laughs> so I, have you seen that movie, I assume? I I have, yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> and also, when I was writing that lyric, I was like, what is the worst, the, like the lowest reviewed movie of all time on IMDb? And it's that one. Really? That's It's below yeah. Troll 2? It is, yes. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. I, I haven't seen either of them, but I may have to look them up. Um, <laughs> so you're allowed to eat cheese, but only through your nose. Is there a yes. story behind that? I don't know that there is. It just seemed like a really unpleasant way to eat cheese. Mm, okay. Fair enough. And I do love my cheese. <laughs> yeah, there's some good stuff in here. And it always struck me that, like, if heaven or hell were real, they'd have to be personalized. Because one person's idea of heaven is somebody else's idea of hell, I'm sure. Exactly. You know? There may be people out there who would love to eat cheese through their nose. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there are people who do it on <laughs> YouTube for views, you know? <laughs> And that's, that's the other thing you mentioned, you know, smash that like button. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, that was my, uh, the mix engineer's favorite line. He's like, every time I get to the line about the YouTube influencer, it makes me laugh. I've heard this song <laughs> dozens of times. <laughs> oh, so are you putting together a new album? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm doing, I'm working on getting into a new comedy special. I think oh, that's cool. my next sort of like full length project. Um, I did do a new version of my greatest hits album this year that I sell at shows. Uh, it's now called Vignettes of Questionable Taste. And, uh, and so that's a fun one to get at shows. Um, but yeah, I am working towards a new stand up special this year and really kind of trying to like go, okay, actually refine these jokes that you've been telling for a while now and make them better so that you can put them on tape and get done with them. Uh, so I've been in the process of that and I'm hoping to do it sometime later this year, but it might be early next year at this point. So when you do your stand-up specials, how do you release them? I, uh, well, that's a great question. So in the past, I have released them on DVD and Blu-ray. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can get them at shows. Um, I've released them as digital downloads uh, through Gumroad, so you can purchase a digital download. And just recently, uh, after seeing the success of many stand-up specials on YouTube, I was like, okay, my last one has been out for a couple of years now. Um, some people have bought it. Some people have seen it. Uh, I'm just going to put it out on YouTube now and see how it does. And it's doing it's doing pretty well. The response has been really nice to it. And so Burning Sensation is up on YouTube for free now. I don't like the idea of having to do that with my next special uh, because they cost money to, to yeah. do. And uh, YouTube doesn't give you a lot of money back for that kind of thing. But uh, with the amount of traffic that they're sending into comedy specials right now, it's, it's uh, sort of enticing. And... I, so yeah, I don't know. I might, I might put it out in a more limited basis for, you know, the first six months or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, or, um, you know, if I can find some interesting distribution through 
uh, comedy dynamics or 800 pound gorilla or somebody like that, uh, then, then there may be some enhanced distribution. So yeah, I was wondering if you, if you were going to try to, uh, maybe get it up on, on, um, Netflix or something. If, if you can find a distributor, Netflix is damn near impossible. Yeah. Uh, these days, um, Amazon Prime is definitely doable, which this current one should be on there, and I just never kind of got around to getting it on there. Uh, but stuff like Amazon Prime and even like Tubi and different channels like that are are much more doable. Mm -hmm. Netflix is a big beast yeah. these days. <laughs> as course. fun as that would be. Yeah. Uh, the, oh, the new Chad Daniel special, so good on Netflix. Is it? I have to check it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, do you have anything you'd like to plug? uh plug yeah go watch my special on youtube <laughs> it's called burning sensation uh and uh it's a lot of fun it's some of my best work it took me five years to write that show and uh it's a lot of it really still holds up very well and i'm, I'm pretty proud of that one so that's the uh, big thing to do um and then also if you are not part of team phil Agelos yet which is my fan community uh go to philjohnsoncomedy.com and you can sign up for free there we do exclusive uh live streams every week and uh contests merch drops they get to hear all the stuff uh, before it hits the airwaves uh, and you get uh, all the behind the scenes kind of kind of funsies that we do. It's all right. Group of people. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, sir. And we will catch you next time. Absolutely. Later, dude. Thanks. This is the fun. You dog bit me. You think you're the victim? Well, here's my new dictum. You're going to be sorry because I know how to pick them. Lawyer up. File that suit. I get big money and your little dog too. And I'm buying one of those. Just suck, suck your brains out. Cause she's a sucky person. She's a milk. My mommy, I wanna get friendly with her. Milk. My mommy, I wanna get filthy with her. Watch the highfalutin arrow shooting hammer swinging punks. Then some doctor says he's moving between universes. What? But I've only been hurt. That's The Funny Music Project at thefump.com. T H E F U M P.com. Hear the song just to say, I hope you have a crappy birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. There's a God. I will pray for you to have a crappy birthday. Time for funny music news. Something, something, something. In the news, the Arrogant Worms have launched a new crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo to, to fund their next album. You get perks like pre-release downloads of the album, your name in a song of praise, or shall we make for our donors, and you can even be the first person to hear the album in the whole world, except for us, we'll need to hear it first. Check out Indiegogo.com, search for the Arrogant Worms new album. And let's see how much I forgot to look up how much they were trying to raise. They're looking for fourteen thousand four hundred and sixty-eight dollars. That's a very specific amount of money. Uh, okay, they are at three thousand four hundred and eighty, with forty-four days left to go. Uh, it says it's been too long. Help us, help us grow juicy new musical fruit for you to pick. So check them out. Help them out. The Logan Awards are accepting nominations this month through the end of the month. So if you haven't made your nominations yet, do so now. Go to LoganAwards.com, click on nominations at the top of the screen. Yeah, I forgot to check Jeff Whitmire's Indiegogo, too. Jeff Whitmire's Indiegogo is up to $2,497 with three days left. And so if you would like to help him out, there is still a little bit of time to get involved in that. I can't remember if we talked about the Fump Volume 108, or I'm sorry, 105 on this show already or not, but it's it's already gone out to subscribers. It was added to the Fump Store the other day. Features all of our songs from May and June of 2024, plus a special bonus interview with Derwood Bowen, since we weren't able to get him on the Fump cast and he wanted to be interviewed. So it was like, hey we'll do that so that's available now in the store at thefump.com and i think that's all the news i got 
I still have some tickets left to sell for my show opening for Green Jello on August 10th in Clifton, New Jersey. So if you are near New Jersey and want to come to that show, please get in touch with me or go to devospice.com. All right, I think that's all the news I got. You got anything before tour dates? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Nothing. Tour dates. On Sundays in Nashville, Tennessee, Steve Goody hosting at the Bluebird. On Sundays online, Two Sleeps. Mondays online, Steve Goody and Brad Tassel at virtualcomedyshow.com. Mondays and Tuesdays online, Bill Larkin. The 26th through the 28th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Bonnie Gordon. That's Confluence. On the 27th in Castro Valley, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. On the 27th in Milford, Pennsylvania, Carla Ulbrich. On the 31st in Long Island City, New York, David W. Jacobson. On the 1st in Haywood, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. The 1st through the 4th in Las Vegas, Nevada, Bonnie Gordon. The 2nd through the, I'm going to guess that's the 4th, not the 24th. Oh, no, that is the 2nd through the 24th. In Edinburgh, Scotland, in the UK, Steve Goody. On the 3rd in Santa Cruz, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. On the 3rd in Jersey City, New Jersey, Carla Ulbrich. And on the 4th on YouTube, Escape from the Secret Lab featuring the Consortium of Genius. And birthdays today, July 25th, we have two. We have Austin Ashleman of Needle Juice Records and Chris Waffle. Happy birthday, guys. Happy birthday. All right. Chuck, you want to introduce this song? Yes, it is the theme song to Super Dork and Fangirl. And which one are you? <laughs> Super Dork. Of course. Or Fangirl. <laughs> Here it is. Who always got straight A's in school? Who can't play sports or darts or pool? Who answers the call when things are too cool? It's Super Dork. It's Super Dork. When the dork's around Who follows him from town to town Whose eyes are as green as her nose is brown It's fangirl, it's fangirl They're not dynamic and they don't fight crime But with two capes and a magic accordion They deliver same day dorkness faster than I'm here with Steve Goody. How you doing, Steve? I'm good, Tom. Happy new Weird Al song. Happy new Weird Al song. <laughs> I like. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a very nice surprise. I very much enjoyed that. Oh, did we ever need it? Yes, absolutely. So, so tell us about this uh, theme song you posted. Well, I happen to make this new CD that just dropped last Wednesday called The Adventures of... Let's see if I can get it so you can see it. The Adventures of Super Dork and Fangirl. Our friend Chuck, who we all, all of us in the FUMP community met last October at FUMP Fest, is just a world-class, talented genius at drawing. And uh, she's been a fan of my stuff, well, for a little while. She's a huge Weird Al fan. Uh, and she, since she can't meet Weird Al, you know, like she'd like to, she just gloms onto the rest of us because she's awesome like that. And uh, we decided to do a project together uh, where I'm super dork and she's fangirl. And she did the artwork for this thing, which is just look at this. I mean, I don't know. This is not going to do it justice, but look at the colors. Look at the characters. It's just so nice. And then, then, ooh, look, you extra, you get extra. You get a whole cartoon. It's crazy. It's a comic strip. Wow. That's awesome. That's it amazing. Is awesome. I've never done a six panel one before because cheap, but <laughs> this needed it. So yeah, and of course, a theme song was required. So I thought I would do the Fump community a favor by posting a song that's less than a minute long. You're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. It's inhaling you dust live? or something. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So how, <laughs> hi Bob. So um, how did this whole super dork and fangirl thing come about? We were just well, hmm. 
how did it come about? She's such a fangirl, obviously. So I think that's where it started. And I thought that sounds like the name of a sidekick. So I had to come up with a super, I think that's how it went. I had to come up with a superhero for myself and, oh, oh, I, I do. I think I do remember this. When I was <laughs> in uh, Edinburgh last year for the Fringe Festival, one of the, one of the shows I was teching was a guy named Tom Greaves and he's got a whole show. He's a very British fellow. Uh, he's got a whole show about the uh, boarding school system in England, which is still in full effect and, and baffling to anybody who's not British. And it's a very funny and tragic and heartbreaking and hilarious and dark and weird show. And one of the things he used in his show was the theme song from a cartoon that he remembers from when he was growing up. And I don't think anyone in the United States has ever heard of it, but it's a, it's a TV show, a cartoon called Super Ted, in which Ted is a teddy bear who is in... <laughs> endowed with magic powers by a, by a spaceman okay he, he goes on adventures and solves disasters and crimes and stuff and super and i had to hear the theme to this about i don't know 100 times while i was working this show so it's pretty stuck in my head and so that got caught in my i think that was part of the whole my in, inner zeitgeist if you will and uh just super ted became super dork and away we go That's and this is your 38th album 38th album that's a lot of albums. A lot of albums, Tom. Mm. What am I doing with my life? Oh, yeah. I'm making these. That's what I'm doing. Someday. Someday it's going to be important. You're making lots of albums. Yeah. I go for quantity more than anything else. <laughs> it's quantity over quality. I get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. And profitability. Yeah. <laughs> quantity over everything. So when do you leave for Edinburgh? Two nights from now. Actually, I'm first, well, here's what's happening. On thir Wednesday, I will fly to Edinburgh, arriving on Thursday. And then on Friday, I will leave Edinburgh in a huff and go to Ireland, where I have a few shows. I got a show in uh, Northern Ireland, then two shows in regular Ireland, and then another show in Northern Ireland, because I'm booking this stuff and I'm an idiot. So a lot of, I'm going to see, I'm going to see a lot of Ireland. And I was going to take trains between these things, but it's so difficult and, and quite pricey and it takes twice as long to take trains between these two very spread out towns as it does to just drive. So I'm renting a car and spending about the same amount of money and a lot less time and a lot less hassle traveling around. Mm. And then that back to sense. Edinburgh. Yeah. Then back to Edinburgh for three and a half weeks of joy doing my show and teching three other shows. And all three of these other shows seem really interesting and cool. So I won't, I don't think I'll get sick of anything. I'll just be nice. morning till night crash morning till night crash. It'll I don't know awesome. if you're going to have any downtime while you're in Edinburgh, but uh, Ricky Lindholm is doing a show at the Edinburgh oh, is she? Festival. Yes. Huh. Do you know the dates? Or is it just one date? No, I don't. Um, I can look it up. Yeah, it's, it's on up. her website, I believe. There's Ricky often Lindholm. someone working that's awesome. Like we saw Rich Hall when we were there in 2022, and he's just incredible. One of my favorites of all time. He nice. just happened to be in town. The, the Brits love him. He just, for some <laughs> reason, he appeals like crazy. Awesome. He lives in Montana, but hey, bring him over, they say. They don't say it like that. <laughs> sure, why not? Hmm. So you are you ready for Edinburgh? We'll find out, won't we? <laughs> well, you'll for... find out. I won't, because I won't be there. I'll let you know. Okay. I'm ready to do my show. That part I'm ready for. All of the things that surround it, I have no idea if I'm ready for. I did... I, I paid for all the printing for, you know, flyers and posters and a big old uh, lamppost wrap banner thing and uh, got the theater and I, I've got my the things I'm bringing with me and things I'm not that I'm either renting or buying when I'm over there. It's all everything's in place as far as I know, but it could all just completely explode and it'll be a, a mad rush to pull it together. And I just don't know. That's part of the fun. And it's a smart thing to do when you're in your 20s. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes, I can see that. I can. I can see that. <laughs> and and so, so does that mean it's a smarter thing to do when you're in your fifties, or a dumb thing to do when you're in your fifties? It's a dumb thing to do when you're in your fifties. Yeah. But what the heck? I still have some energy. Let's do this. Yeah, might as well do it while you yeah. can. And the more I do it, the the better I get at this particular show. And I've had people who've come to see it in the in the past two months. I did it uh, last week at a Mexican restaurant, which was fun. But a month ago, I did it at Zany's here in Nashville with a giant screen as the back of the stage. And that's how I've always envisioned this thing with the two characters and everything else just huge. And it really worked. 
and it's got me psyched to do it again. I will I'll be back to the small screen in Edinburgh, but I'm booked in Zanies again uh, on September 3rd. No, September 10th. Cool. September 10th. I got to update the website. Thank you very much. Well, that, that's how you you did it at Fumfest because we had the big screen, so you had two. Big... That is true. That is true. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But it was actually, but, but it wasn't as big and it wasn't as bold. Projectors. Mm. Although they're wonderful, and I was casting a shadow and all that stuff, but the this screen in the back of Zanies is just, and it's, I'm actually backlit. <laughs> I'm not casting oh. a shadow. Okay. I'm casting a shadow on the audience is what I'm casting a shadow on with this thing on, so it's it's pretty spectacular. So I'm hoping that having done it, you know, 22 days in a row in Edinburgh, I'll have new stuff and I'll have new pace and it'll just be, it'll rock when I get there. Again, we hope. Awesome. Well, best of yeah. luck to you. Thank you very much. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? I know you have the new CD. Go to stevegoody.com, buy the new CD, and come see a show if you're going to be in Scotland. I'll be there all of August, and I'll be at Zany's September 10th here in Nashville. And you'll be at FumFest. And I'll be at Fum... Oh, what am I thinking? I'll be at FumFest. Yeah! <laughs> First weekend of October. Yep. Looking forward to it. Somewhere in Ohio. I've forgotten the name of the town. <laughs> Hudson, I believe. If you're not sure, I'm certainly not sure. <laughs> we'll I'm so far out. behind on my planning. I so much going on. But the fe- the event is already there, so we yeah, the event's there. Way. Yeah, the the hard part is Andy's problem now. Right. So. Well done. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. All right. Thank you. And best of luck in Edinburgh. And thank uh, you very much. Look forward to hearing how it goes. You'll be the first to know. Somehow, I doubt that. You'll be the last to know. <laughs> All right, later, dude. Bye. So, Chuck, what can you tell us about this song? Uh, well, it's awesome. Number one. Number yeah, two, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> number two, uh, my vocals in it are weak. No, they were fun to do. Uh, it was. It was I. Th- I had the idea to just throw them in because, I mean, you can't have a Super Dark and Fangirl theme song without having Fangirl in there. Right. And I think it turned out pretty well. I had to redo them a couple of times because I, I got so self-conscious because that's just me. Was this your first time recording vocals mind. for something? Yes. Uh, there was, I mean, one time, I, I, I mean, I, this was all done in uh, at more studios in the basement. Um I went down there one time before to record just just for fun, do like a parody of a song, but then I never I never did anything with it because I thought it was stupid. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all got to start somewhere. My first like forty songs were remarkably stupid. So, but Doctor Demento <laughs> played one of them, and that's what got me started. So, yeah, I don't think he'd play that one, but. <laughs> So, but yeah, having the first, it was definitely my first time recording something and having it put out there like that. So I was, I was like up here with the nervousness about it, but after listening to it about 15 dozen times, I think, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. And the other, other tracks I did on here. No, this, this CD and that theme song is so good. I don't think it needs or wants an evasive lift of any kind. Very good. If you didn't say it, I was I about it. to. Um, <laughs> so, w- what's the the comic strip on the inside about? So, it was uh, something that she doesn't never mention is that at, from the very beginning, the idea was that uh, Super Dog and Fangirl, we would, you know, just in our heads, maybe we'd make like comic strips and stuff of them, kind of like a. Uh, Oh, I can't remember the name of the comic now. It's like the little boy and the tiger. You know? Oh, Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, like that. And he, he always sent me those. I'd be like, we need to do this of them. We need to do it now. And we finally did. Uh, this this one is just super dork. His, oh, I have to spoil it? No, I'll just, you don't the spoil it. Find just out what it's about. Give, it, give, yeah, us like a, a, it's about. A, give us like a sneak preview, but don't spoil it. <laughs> super dork. He gets in a pickle. And Fangirl saves the day. Okay. Okay. So Fangirl's the real super dork. And super dork is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's the real hero. Because he's a, he's just a dork. He's just a dork. Fangirl's awesome, though. Yes. That's why, she, that's why she's got the better outfit. 
<laughs> Show that again. It cut away for some reason. Oh. You know what? Hang on. That's why she's a better outfit. Very nice. Thank you. And I'd like to note that that Zoom interview with Steve is outdated now because... His show got moved to September 9th. Now it's Fangirl. I have to make sure that that is known. It's September 9th now. Which show was that? The one at... Um, Zanies. Zanies, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for updating that. Ah. It's my duty. <laughs> the official Fangirl duty. Exactly. You did good. All I'm right. doing manager work for free. <laughs> right? I'm so, under, I'm, I'm so underappreciated over here. <laughs> Underappreciated, underpaid, everything. This goes on. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, do you have anything you'd like to plug? Um, my Instagram. Every, all my socials are vv three sba. That's where everything is, and there you can find my commissions. Give me money, please, so I can eat more than popsicles every day. Yes. Give her money. Her her artwork is awesome. I've I've given her money for artwork. As you can see, it is very awesome. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's do some feedback. Making the internet absolutely ridiculous. Dementia Radio. www.dementiaradio.org. Port eight zero two seven. Please hang up and try again. This is the part where there's feedback. 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 You know that segment of the show we do about now? Feedback. Feedback. <laughs> feedback. Feedback. Lee, Lee, let's sing a song about Lee, Lee, let's sing a song about Lee, Lee, you're testing my ADD. Eclectic Lee wrote. I'm sure Devo heard my cry of cog damn it on his way to Buffalo over Bella Via instead of Via Bella. Sorry, Rand and Aaron. It happens. I, I, I've been mixing up Via Bella and Vela, Via Bella and Bella Via. Like, I was doing that all weekend. I was like, wait a minute, which is the name and which is the band? And you know. All right. Uh... For who could ever learn to love? A beast. Father Beast wrote, I just want to say that it's hot as balls outside, and every time I go out, my nose is hit with that incandescent scent. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Father Beast. And over on YouTube, Ken Rondo 2 says, Wow, fun show. Love Harv Man and all the others involved seemed really cool. Both featured songs were first rate. Thank you very much. And hey, log. Oh my god, it's you, not again. Hey, log wrote, apologies, but I'm still reeling from the whole Kyle situation. Glad to see I'm not the only one that won't erase him from history, but if I do play his stuff on my holiday shows, I will do it while giving it the stink eye. However, entry into the Whacked Out 5 countdown has been denied and his show ID has been retired. Hope you guys are healing better than I am. Thanks, A Log. Yeah, we're 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 getting by. You know the you know how it is. All right, that's all the feedback we got. So teasing. He's a teasing kind of guy. Now you have a job. Yeah. Tomorrow's song is by Burble's Belly, the only act on the Fump who's named after a cat's stomach. And Tuesday's song is by a new artist, so you're going to have to sit and wait and find out who that is. All right, I need a Spotify playlist topic for this week. Chuck, any ideas? Superhero theme! Superheroes, we can do that. All right. Um, yeah, there's there's plenty that. of them. I've, I've done that topic before, so I, 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 there's plenty of songs. Oh. So, cool. Blue Thank theme. You. Huh? Blue theme. Blue? Mm. <laughs> no, I'm Blue. Gonna do, I'm going to do superheroes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have a website or anything? Yeah, I do. <laughs> do you want to give it out or not? <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, it's weirdow.com. Uh, 
uwu.ai. You can right. go there and you find stuff and whatever. <laughs> I, <think laughs> I was wondering if you hadn't had one for your artwork, like for your commissions and stuff. But Oh, but there's commission info on there. Okay. Okay. And good. my socials and everything. It's not just a fan site. All right. It's just branded. Okay. Cool. All right. And uh, Phil Johnson is at roadsideattraction.com, and Steve Goody is at stevegoody.com, and he will be in Edinburgh. In fact, I think he's there now. Um, all right, let's get out of here. Uh, thank you for listening to the Funny Music Podcast. I'm Devo Spice, and there's Chuck. You got to say something, or it doesn't cut to you. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Funny say Music something. Podcast. You can listen live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific at DementiaRadio.org and join us in the chat or subscribe to the podcast feed. Look us up on iTunes and be sure to leave us a review. Feedback for the show can be sent to info at thefump.com. The Funny Music Podcast is a production of Fidem Interactive, LLC, released under a Creative Commons share-alike license. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Shout it to random people on the street. And be sure to visit thefump.com for the latest funny songs. Tune in next week where you'll hear Luke Ski say, I was the original super dork. <laughs> <laughs>